Hi, it's me Aiden, welcome to Curious DIY. Today we're going to be going through the Hydraulic Jack Project Kit. I'm really excited about this one. It's going to work like this, it's really cool, it's nice and strong, and it's a clever little thing um, using a little bit of hydraulics to get this uh, hydraulic jack going. So, grab your kits and let's jump right in. Okay, stunning. So this is the package that we're dealing with. So let's give this guy a bit of an open. There we go. This you can throw away and take all the contents out of your packets. There we go. Make sure not to lose anything. Got to keep everything together. So let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Um, every kit's obviously got the packaging that we can just put to the side for now. Um, we'll do the same thing with this the back one um, and it's here where you've got the instructions and so the task over here is to uh, it explains that you must use the exploded views and parts provided to build a model of the hydraulic jack this is the exploded view um, it is an, a nice instruction guide with everything in it that you will need so we'll go through that in a second um, then of course you've got your curious sticker as always lots of fun um, you've got a, a, a 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter piece of cardboard which will be used for later and then you've got your profile cutouts. Yeah, you should have one large one and one smaller one. And these are going to be what we will use to assemble the hydraulic jack. You've then got a smaller, a slightly smaller piece of cardboard, which you can see in this one is the base. Um, so we'll use that later. Um, you should then have some PVC tubing, which is very, very good. You'll have a little bit of wood glue, just three milliliters. It isn't a lot, but we won't need a lot for this kit. Um, then you're going to have a 3 milliliter syringe and a 5 milliliter syringe. Uh, let me just double check. No, pardon me, it's a 10 centimeter syringe. So those are two are going to go together and uh, create the hydraulic system, which would be really awesome. And then you've got three paper sticks. Mine's snapped a little bit, um, but you'll see that the, where the lines are are slightly different. All right, so this one in the middle is three centimeters by three centimeters. So we need these two together. So I'll put them here together. And then these ones are the same. So this obviously is now not in the middle, it's slightly to the right hand side. So we know that these two are the same size and these two are the same size. And that's everything in the hydraulic, in the hydraulic jack. So from this point, all you're going to do is look at the instruction guide. It is quite, um, it is quite a complicated build. So just be, be patient with it and take it slowly. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see here that on the instructions is everything that I've just gone through regarding the kit contents, but there are a few things you would need, such as a pair of scissors, um, a ruler, a little bit of water, and perhaps a pencil as well. And then there are three assemblies, three main assemblies. There's assemble one, which is the saddle. So on the hydraulic jack, if you look at this part, the saddle is essentially this part and, and these cardboard pieces together, um, which is where our objects will rest on. That's called the saddle. Then we've got the lifting arm, which is all of the actual components which are attached to the saddle. Um, so this is this body part, um, this top part, and then there's a little piece at the bottom. I don't know if, yeah, there you can see it over there. That is the lifting arm. So the lifting arm attaches to the saddle. Um, and then finally, assembly three is the base and the cylinder housing. The cylinder housing being these two uprights. Um, it is then the end of the syringe which attaches to the lifting arm. Um, and then the actual um, body itself is then attached to the base. And this is the hydraulic jack. So here's a few tips that I want to give you. Um, when you glue the assemblies, glue assemblies one, two, and three first. And then leave them out to dry for about an hour um, before assembling any of the parts together. So first do them separately and then um, put everything together. When you assemble this one, be sure to leave one of these bodies out so that you can assemble everything together and then your final step will be to put that on and close everything in together. Uh, my, my next tip is that you must use your glue sparingly, only applying a thin, thin layer together. Because as you can see, there's lots of pieces of the cardboard which are quite close to each other. And so if you're going to put too much glue on, you're going to have some pieces sticking together when they set, which obviously would cause some problems and your, your hydraulic jack won't move. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, and then only fill the three millimeter syringe with water and make sure that there are no bubbles in the system. So what we mean by this, if you look at this system over here, I've got the 10 milliliter um, syringe inside the hydraulic jack. 
and the three millimeter sy milliliter syringe is outside the hydraulic jack. So if I take this out, oh goodness, sometimes this will happen, it's fine, just pop it back on. So when you're filling it up, you want to be sure to fill up your three milliliter syringe this way with your 10 milliliter syringe fully closed, um, fully sealed. You don't want it to be open, otherwise the air bubbles over here will fill up. And even when you fill up the water, those bubbles, um, there won't be enough pressure in the, 10, in the 10 milliliter syringe to get those air bubbles out. So you want to make sure that it's like this um, and then holding your, your syringe this way. So right now it's inside the system, but you can actually fill the system before you assemble everything together. Very important. Um, then another tip is that when you are assembling the, I'm actually going to close this just to be sure that I don't get any leaks. Even though I've got air bubbles, that's not good. So when you place the 10 milliliter syringe inside the um, inside the actual base, there are two sides of the, the, the part where you press with your, with your finger that you will need to cut off. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, so let's open up this 10 milliliter syringe. I'm going to grab my craft knife. When you're dealing with a craft knife, be very careful. The blades are very sharp, so I'm going to be as careful as possible. I'm going to put these to the side. So if you look at the 10 milliliter syringe, there is a cross-shaped support holding the this surface in place. And you want to cut it in a very specific way. Let me show you how. So if you look at the top of this, you'll be able to see through the button to see that cross. And so this is what you should see. You should see the cross underneath with the surface on top, just like that. Now when you cut it, you don't want to cut it this way. This would be incorrect. What you do want to do is you want to rather cut it so that you are not cutting any of those supports. Oh, that was a terrible circle. All right, what you want to do is you actually want to cut it so that you come along the edges of that support. So that th this area is what you are cutting off. Okay, so you don't want to, you want to be sure not to um, hit any of that plastic. And so this does mean that all you want to do is you want to find where the X is um, these lines that are running against it, it's quite consistent, so I think you can do what I'm doing. And holding it at a 45 degree angle, you want to cut there and there. And that should be good. Okay, and so I'm just going to put it down on the table and cut downward. Yeah, I think this is one of those instances where scissors is probably actually just going to be better. There we go. And there we go. It doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. It just needs to be a little bit of the area trimmed off. You can see mine's not very neat at all, but nevertheless. So as long as it can fit in between these two body parts down at the bottom, then you are golden. Then another tip that I want to give you is in the instance of one of these smaller pieces, if one of these smaller pieces were to break or to get squashed while you're busy working with it, don't panic. Um, there is a way around this. So all you're going to do is grab that 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter piece of cardboard. Right. You're then going to, instead of making a circle, you're going to make a square because all these really are, if you look over here and over here and down over here, is they're just spaces, making sure that the width of this is all lining up quite nicely. And so all you really want to do, um, let's say we've already taken these out. Okay. When you are dealing with the, when you are dealing with these, obviously be very careful. So be careful not to squash them because they they do squash very easily. So just hold them quite lightly. And watch, I'll show you how easily you can squash them. It just yeah, which obviously wouldn't be ideal. So the first thing you can maybe try is see if it will go back. All right, but maybe let's say, just for the sake of this example, I'm not having any luck there. I'm now going to take this, just make a few marks there, there, and there, the four main points, and then a nice center point, and then just draw a line, and a line, a line there, and a line over there, a nice center point. And then just cutting into the cardboard lightly to, to cut the first layer. Okay, and then you can go to cut the back layer. I can do this 
same thing of over here. And there we have it, a nice, oh, you can see it hasn't gone all the way through, so that's fine. Let me just fix that up. And there you have it. You have remade one of these pieces. Um, and now all you will need to do um, is just make a little cross in the middle. Just being very careful. Okay, and then we just want to make sure that a paper stick can fit through. Um, so just being, again, being very careful not to crush it or collapse the fluting. Um, and now we are good to go. So this is a replacement for one of these. Obviously this you're not going to do necessarily. It's a backup plan in case one of these are crushed. Um, but again, be very careful when you're dealing with this. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to show you is how all of these pieces fit together. So it's very important that um, the last things that you are putting on is this piece. And these two pieces, you can see there's a piece there. And there's one on that side as well. All right, put these on last and these on your, on your profiles look like this, this piece and this piece. And of course, just one of these pieces, they are symmetrical. So whichever one you, you're left with last, and when you assemble everything together, you're going to notice, you'll notice that this 35 milli millimeter piece that is in the saddle is now the piece that is over here. And so on the outside of this piece over there and on this side is where these two pieces will go. Then on the other side, you're gonna take one of the 40 millimeter um, paper sticks, like this one, you can take these little pieces off, like this piece. This is going to then go over here and inside the lifting arm inside the lifting arm okay so this 30 millimeter piece is joining there and there whereas this 40 milli millimeter piece is actually going to be suspended in this gap so in this area over there so you can see here it's nice and suspended these areas match up okay they're the same areas so it's just suspended and it's there but what's very important is that you'll notice so these two lines this line and this line are parallel. And so this means that when the entire system moves, they will move parallel to each other and you'll have four main pivot points. Okay, so make sure that that's the case. If these aren't parallel, then something has gone wrong. So again, that's going to be the 40 mil paper stick that's in the top of the lifting arm over here. And the 40 mil paper stick that's gonna go on the inside over here. It is the part that goes through the top of the saddle and the, the piece that goes through the bottom of the saddle. Those four points must be parallel. Okay, otherwise just take things slow, look very carefully where everything is on this instruction guide, um, go one thing at a time, assembly one, assembly two, assembly three, um, and from there you'll end with a great hydraulic jack. And then finally, when you are done, you can glue the entire model to the bottom of the base, or to the top of the base, mind you, at the bottom of the, um, these profiles, just applying a little bit of glue on the underside and gluing this on and then letting it set. So you can maybe you just with your hand hold it down for about uh, three minutes should get, get a nice early bond. Five minutes would be even better. Um, and then that should be good to go. And that is your hydraulic jack with a little bit of hydraulics going on. Um, so more than this, it is all up to you. Um, we don't want to give you too much of a, of, um, a handout when it comes to building this. Um, so yeah, be sure to follow the instruction guide nice and slow. Um, paying very careful attention to the important bits um, and then you'll end up with an awesome kit Well, I hope you enjoyed that to find more project kits just like this one head to www.curiousdiy.co.za Right now we have 24 of these project kits and a whole bunch of other kits to to choose from so jump on that today uh, We'll see you next time. Stay curious Thanks for watching and stay curious